Hi, this is Hunter the Honda Mackinnon. Today I'll start you guys off with a new review series, the films of Paul W. S. Anderson. You may know him from his involvement in certain video game movies. In fact, it seems the popular notion is that Anderson has only worked in video game films, but actually he's only directed three, Mortal Kombat as well as the first and fourth films in the Resident Evil series. He also wrote and produced the second and third films in the Resident Evil series, and he was one of the producers for DOA, Dead or Alive. But beyond that, those are his only video game-related efforts. If anything, his filmography seems to feature a lot of science fiction films, including some of my personal favorites. His newest film, The Three Musketeers, is coming out soon, and in this review series, I'll be taking a look at his entire filmography in eight parts, and yes, this includes movies by him, which I've reviewed before. The earliest movie which most people know Anderson for is his 1995 film Mortal Kombat, but it's actually very interesting to note that his debut film as a director came out only a year earlier. The movie is called Shopping. It was made entirely in England, and it may interest you to know that not only does this movie have nothing to do with either video games or sci-fi, it also happens to be the first role of one Jude Law. In the film, Jude Law plays a teenager named Billy who likes causing trouble and driving like a lunatic. He doesn't care about anything except getting a rush from driving fast and living wild. He's assisted in his nightly escapades by his quote-unquote girlfriend, Joe, played by Sadie Frost. Incidentally, Law and Frost would get married a few years down the line, though they are now divorced. She likes Billy and gets a kick out of helping him with his stupid antics, but at the same time seems aware that Billy is just gonna go in over his head at some point and end up back in jail. Bebop is a friend and a sort of informant who keeps Billy in the loop on what goes down in the underworld, and Monkey is a little brat who hangs around them and wants to be a tough guy himself. Sean Pertwee plays Tommy, the head of a local crime ring that sells stolen goods and drugs, among other things. He doesn't like Billy because he's afraid he'll draw the cops to him and might end up exposing his gang's activities to the police. He tries to convince Billy to work for him so he can keep an eye on him, but Billy basically tells him, fuck off, I do what I want. The scene in which this happens, incidentally, is in an, ar is in an arcade, and you can clearly see a cabinet for Street Fighter 2 in the background, which is interesting since 1994 was when the Street Fighter movie starring Jean-Claude Van Damme came out. Jonathan Price is also in there as a police captain who wants to put a stop to youth violence in his precinct. At the same time, he seems to want Billy to mend his ways. He's sort of in and out of the movie, but appears at the very beginning and in the middle of the film to have a big to have a talk with Billy about what he's gonna do now that he's done his time. As always, his performance is priceless. Sean Bean is also in the film and plays a big business crime boss who checks up on Tommy. I think it's really cool, especially since this movie came out a year before Goldeneye, and much, much earlier than The Lord of the Rings, though I have to admit that I always get a laugh from seeing that silly mullet of his. The film also features Jason Isaacs, whom most people will recognize as Lucius Malfoy from the Harry Potter films. Isaacs was a college friend of Jeremy Bolt, who's Anderson's producer and a close friend. He ended up playing parts in numerous Anderson movies, especially during the start of his career. His role in shopping, however, is probably the worst of the bunch. He just plays some yob who's trying to shave off the price of a stolen CD player, and Tommy gets up all in his face about it. Incidentally, I have to mention that Sean Pertwee is the son of John Pertwee, who played the third Doctor Who. He also appears in a lot of Anderson's films. The movie doesn't have much of a plot, and it's just a cross-cutting of all the characters' relationships. There's a few action scenes involving Billy and Joe being chased by the police, but these are played more for comedy. The film has a really down-to-earth feel, and even though it doesn't have big special effects or anything flashy, it still has that excellent visual look, which is Paul Anderson's strong point. The film looks beautiful, ironically since Anderson made the film to showcase the hollow industrialized look that sort of plagued his hometown of Newcastle. The film may feel a little slow first time watching it, but it's absolutely worth it for the more comedic points and the excellent performances by the cast. A lot of times I criticize Paul Anderson's writing since the dialogue in his movies tends to sound very simplistic and one-dimensional, but here the awkwardness is sort of appropriate because of the milieu and the much more realistic setting of the film. There's not even a lot I can criticize the movie about. The finale is great, though really sad. The only things that I kind of hate about the film are the insinuations that Joe might have feelings or otherwise be attracted to the character of Tommy. 
It sort of undermines her character, which is paradoxical in that you can clearly see she's the only character in the film who has her feet firmly on the ground. The other problem is a choice of music for the film. There's a tune, Halcyon, by Orbital that plays through practically the entire movie. At first, I was sort of excited since this is the same piece of music that also plays at the end of Mortal Kombat when the good guys return from Outworld. However, it's used at the start of nearly half the scenes. It's a nice piece of music, but hearing it so many times just made it very repetitive. Anderson must have really, really liked this song to have used it so many times. Orbital was also used by Anderson later in the score for Event Horizon. Other than that though, the music in the film is pretty good. And regardless of these criticisms, Shopping is a forgotten gem of a movie. It's not only severely underrated, but also practically forgotten by most. A big part of that is the fact that the movie was actually banned in certain parts of the UK upon its release. People were concerned over the film's portrayal of RAM rating, where people drive their cars into shop display windows and loot them. Yes, Billy and Joe are the main perpetrators of RAM rating in the film, but it's only in a couple of scenes and not very prominent in the overall. In the US, the film was released straight to video, and who was it released by? None other than the schlock movie meister himself, Roger Corman. This started a friendship between Corman and Anderson, which would eventually lead the latter to direct a remake of one of Corman's best known movies, Death Race 2000. Shopping is worth seeing if you're interested in how Anderson got his start, and it's definitely one of his best films. My rating for it is a solid 4 out of 5. Stick around next time when we'll take a look at Paul Anderson's first video game movie. Mortal Kombat!